So hi every uh, hi everyone. Uh, good good morning and good evening to all of you. Today we are going to have very uh, good interview with uh, Rhys uh, Steinberg uh, about uh, our uh, um, entrepreneurship uh, um, like activities that librarians are doing in the doing in their libraries. So the Rhys, uh, hi. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. And could you please uh, introduce yourself? Sure, Lily. Thanks so much. And I really appreciated the invitation. Uh, my name is Reese Steinberg. I am um, a business librarian at uh, Toronto Metropolitan University in uh, Toronto, Canada. And uh, my portfolio includes entrepreneurship, as well as uh, marketing, hospitality and tourism management, and our um, incubators at our university. That's great. Yeah, I, I um, uh, come to know about your profile and it was really uh, impressive that what you are doing in your libraries um, and actually our audiences uh, would like to know about uh, more about your services and what you are providing to your users and uh, the communities. Actually, you are involving with the university um, uh, activities and i would like to know more about like what kind of services you are providing uh, especially like for your students and for the faculty members like as a business librarian yeah definitely thanks for asking um we offer a, a lot of different services they go to from um we've got things like in-class instruction where we go in and do sort of tailored instruction for our entrepreneurship and other business students. Uh, we've got instruction as well that we go over to the different incubators, we call them zones. Uh, so there are different like groups of business incubators that are, that are also considered students, um, but are working on practical businesses. And we do, and we do instruction with them too, so they know how to do um, market research and understand you know, some of the different um, resources that are available to them through the library, and, and as well as the sort of like one-on-one um, -on -one services we offer. We have um, a, a, new pro a new program where we're embedded in the course shells of many different entrepreneurship and business courses. So to make it really easy for students to access different library services or just connect with me or some of my colleagues, we'll put little, um, like uh, library modules inside some of their different courses. So while they're looking at their homework, they can also just skip right over to the library all on the same platform and see that there's a list of different, you know, research guides and other special resources that are specifically for their course that are right in the same place for them. Um, there's so many different things we offer. We have workshops um, that are drop in and these are great because they are for anyone who wants to go to them. So there's all sorts of people that show up to say like market research workshops who are maybe from fashion or um, engineering who think, you know, maybe I'm a little bit interested in doing some market research. I'm not doing it for my classes, but I'm just, I want to drop in and see what there is available, for example. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great what you are doing, really great and impressive. And um, I would like to know that how, how you are determining their information needs, like how you know that what you really like they need in terms of, for example, in different backgrounds or different fields, uh, you as a business librarian, especially I, I would like you uh, mentioned that for determining information needs as a business librarian, what you exactly doing. Yeah, definitely. So that's a great question. So I guess it depends when I'm working with students one on one. A lot of it is about really listening with listening to what they're saying. Well, students, faculty, um, entrepreneurs, it's listening to what they're asking for and hearing what they're one that what they're asking for specifically, but also to what they're looking to achieve with what they're asking, because sometimes they'll ask for much less than we can actually give them. They don't understand what is available to them. So I want to listen to two things, what they are what they want, because if I can get them exactly what they want, if they say, you know, I want this particular uh, market research report and we have it, I'll say, you know, here it is, here's how to access it. But I'll also say, it sounds like what you're looking for is also like, you know, consumer and demographic information, for example. Uh, we have this other, this other database that has a lot of what you might be interested in. Do you want to take a look? And trying to sort of gauge there. Um, so one-on-one -on -one is usually a sort of a mix of those things. When it's in um, groups of people to try and figure out what would be useful for them, I guess a part of it comes from when it's classes, being really familiar with the different assignments and what sort of things they generally um, are, are looking for and what they will need to use in their in their you know further careers. 
Um, another part of it is, is just sort of getting feedback from other users. Um, so some of the workshops we've had, we offer over and over again, just because people say, oh, you know, this is, I had no idea this was available. So we say, okay, this is something that people are really interested in. The more engaged people seem in the certain um, workshops or, or like um, the more engaged they are in questions, the more we want to keep on sort of making that type of material available. Um, one final thing I'll say just about this too, because I feel like there's lots of different ways to go into this, but um, uh, just looking into sort of trends in the industry overall. Um, for example, I know here right now, a lot there's a lot of interest in like geospatial data when it comes to entrepreneurship. So people wanting to take a look at like how mapping and space affects different businesses, um, particularly retail is one of the big ones, I think. And I think that there's sort of a lot of push and pull with uh, sort of um, cloud, like sort of, um, sort of virtual or digital services versus things that really can only be um, available on the ground in certain locations. So we have a geospatial map and data center that's at our library. And that's something that uh, was initially put in for geography students, but is being increasingly used for a lot by a lot of entrepreneurship and business students, just because there's that sort of crossover. So sort of taking what we have and saying, you know, how else can it be used or how might, what, what sort of trends there are, what will we have that can sort of help fulfill those trends? Oh, that's great. That's really <laughs> informative, actually, for the librarians and the, like for the uh, LIS professionals. Um, I would like to ask my other questions about uh, what kind of challenges uh, do you facing during this kind of services or determining information needs? Like, uh, you please uh, give us a brief explanation. Yeah, definitely. Um, I always appreciate getting questions about challenges too. Um, I'd say that there's two big challenges. Um, one is making sure that um, potential users, uh, whether they're entrepreneurs or students or faculty, know what we have available. And I sort of alluded to it earlier. Um, sometimes that they um, they don't they don't necessarily think of the library first as like the place to go for certain types of information. And to be able to get out there and reach out to them and say, you know, we have this. It's available to you. Please don't go purchase it on your own because. You can get it to, for, from us for free, and it's and you know whether it's for your, uh, you know PhD um, work or whether it's for your undergrad like sort of like project that you're doing, um, just come to us first, and we're happy to to show you. Um, I'm, I'm very I'm always very excited about some of the different things we do have to offer. Um, one of our one of our sort of newest um, um, collections we have is a phys physical material collection of like new and innovative materials. So we have a whole room. Um, based on the material connection database where people can actually come in and feel, you know, weird kinds of concretes or like innovative polymers and stuff. And I've had so many students that are so excited about that, that are in entrepreneurship, but also again, engineering and fashion and a few other areas. Um, but it's just making sure they, they, that, that information is out there um, because the people that come are thrilled, but there's, a, you know, for every person that comes at thrilled, there's a few people that maybe didn't hear about it. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just have one yes. other challenge too, and that's just yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yes, open yes. openness of materials. Like, um, I I love that open education, uh, open educational resources are are growing, and there's a lot more of them than there used to be. Um, I still I feel so sad when I talk to students where they say, you know, I love all these all these resources. I don't know how I would do my work without them. How can I access them when I'm when I graduate? And for, for every resource that we have that's like newly open and something that they can, you know, continue to use forever um, and share with colleagues across or like around the world or, you know, wherever they might be, we have, you know, other resources that are, that are not open at all and are locked down and they're, you know, they won't be able to have access unless they're a member of the university. And that's something that I think is so limiting as far as, you know, right now we're getting, we're, we're planning for this conference where we're, where we're from all different parts of the world, but we can't share resources equally with each other just because of the, the closeness of some resources. So I think that's another big challenge that I have. Yeah, and I think um, um, one or two of cha your cha the challenges you mentioned, uh, more or less uh, uh, in the most of libraries, I think librarians facing this kind of challenges. Yeah, uh, very good points you mentioned regarding the challenges. And uh, I would like to know about uh, also the, skills of the librarians that uh, in, in like uh, based on your idea and your thoughts and your experience mm -hmm. what kind of skills librarians needs or uh, what kind of recommendations you are you would like to make to them yeah definitely 
Um, I think the ability, and I, I guess I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the ability to listen yeah. to people, whether they're you know entrepreneurs, students, faculty, and hear what they're asking for and connect them to uh, resources, as well as the knowledge to use those resources, um, helping them to know the extent of what's available. But yeah, that first step, I think, is always just to like really listen to them and hear what, what their goals are. Um, I think another skill would be like being able to teach people to use the resources. So not just to connect them with it, but be able to spend some time um, with, with uh, teaching and making sure that you can adjust that teaching to the different levels of people. I, you know, you don't want to overwhelm an undergrad, but you also never want to talk down to somebody who's ready for a little bit more detailed information. Um, so yeah, just being able to adjust that a little bit. Um, I think always like a willingness to try out new things, new databases or other new products. Um, just or trying new ways of using them, being a little bit creative, because so often I'm sure you have this experience too, where there'll be someone asking for something that is just a little bit unusual, um, you know, especially when people are working on really practical businesses that, that they're sort of niche, they, they may not have the exact, we might not have the exact information that they're looking for, we might be able to say, okay, I know you're looking for X, we have like Y and Z, but if you kind of put them together, it sort of gets the same the same response. So have, being able to have that process is one of the things that I think is so fun about business librarianship. Um, but it's and it's something that people should know that that's you know that's something that you, it's a skill you can develop. Um, customer service is always good. Always being willing to like reach out to people if you walk by and it looks like someone's like a little bit lost, regardless of what your what your what your actual like you know, job role is to be like, hey, you know, do you need anything? Is Have you been helped? That kind of thing. Um, conversely, ability to put limits when people ask you to do more than uh, you can really do or whether people, when people ask you to do things that maybe are outside of what you're comfortable with, the ability to say like very nicely, like actually that's not, you know, what I, what I can do. Maybe direct them to something else like a writing center if they're asking for writing help, that sort of thing. Uh, and then lastly, organizational skills I think are so important. Um, just because there's all sorts of different things that we're doing all the time and lots of different people that we're working with. So being able to have a way of organizing your day and keeping on top of everything so that you can be reliable and get things done when you need to is so essential. Thank you so much for this uh, very important skills that really uh, by myself uh, 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 feel that really all of us uh, need for being as a librarian in any position like an entrepreneurship librarian or business or or just uh, I mean uh, just simple librarian we need in our libraries thank you so much for providing this valuable information and uh, as uh, you know uh, our international uh, conference on entrepreneurship uh, and libraries uh, will take place on first and second November, uh, virtually and uh, uh, free. So I would like uh, to uh, ask you any message uh, or any recommendation, please, for to, to our audience. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, I just want to say that I really want to make sure that this conference is open to anyone that, that even thinks they might be interested in um, entrepreneurship or business research or working in a library with businesses with businesses and entrepreneurs or business and entrepreneurship students. Um, and that would include uh, library students, maybe people even considering to become library students or library uh, workers, um, other library workers, whether they're librarians, library technicians, or library guides who wanna expand their knowledge of business reference and research. Um, of course, business librarians too, and entrepreneurship librarians, yes. but really anyone who's interested in that in this field at all, or you know, sort of in the library field, but wanting to uh, learn a little bit more, I think this will be a really great conference that have a really good mix of internationally focused uh, workshops and, and people as well. Um, I think conferences are really made up by the people that come. Um, and yeah, I'm just really enthusiastic about it being an international um, conference. I think I'm, I'm so glad that we have a lot of different people from different areas of the world organizing it together. I hope that we get even more people from different areas coming. And, and yeah, I hope next year maybe we'll even have more internet, more internationalization and, and yeah, um, like more different people that are willing to put some time in and then also get a lot out of it. So yeah, that's, that's what I have to say. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really, it was really a great interview and great information that uh, you provided to us. I really myself enjoyed from what you are doing and uh, what you are providing for uh, your users in different 
backgrounds and different uh, different majors. Thank you so much for your valuable time and valuable information for us. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Laylee. I really appreciate you like asking me and taking the time to organize it. And um, yeah, it's, it's such a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.